Welcome to worship today with Holy Love Lutheran Church. We celebrate the Trinity today, which is this very complex understanding of God as three in one that we still haven't, some 2,000 years later, been able to figure out how to articulate. Today we're going to be looking at a bunch of images of the Trinity and thinking about how God is at work in our lives and in our world. We begin our worship time with a confession of our sins and an assurance of God's good forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us now confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Beloved of God, hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. heaven and earth, before the foundation of the universe and the beginning of time, you are the triune God, author of creation, eternal word of salvation, life-giving spirit of wisdom. Guide us to all truth by your spirit, that we may proclaim that all, proclaim all that Christ has revealed and rejoice in the glory he shares with us. Glory and praise to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans, the fifth chapter. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the eighth Psalm. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens, out of the mouths of babes and infants you have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? 
Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the seas, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's sermon text is from the eighth chapter of Proverbs. Does not wisdom call, and does not understanding raise her voice? On the heights besides the way, at the crossroads, she takes her stand. Beside the gate in the front of town, at the entrance of the portal, she cries out, To you, O people, I call, and my cry is to all that live. The Lord created me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts of long ago. Ages ago I was set up. At the first, before the beginning of the earth, when there were no depths, I was brought forth, when there were no springs abounding with water, before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills, I was brought forth, when he had not yet made earth and fields, or when the world's first bits of soil, when he had established the heavens, I was there, when he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when he established the fountains of the deep when he assigned the sea to its limit, so that the waters might not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him like a master worker, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world, and delighting in the human race. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Last week for Pentecost, we talked about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, and we emphasized that the Holy Spirit, or the Holy Ghost, as some of you may have grown up calling it, that this third member of the Trinity wasn't new. All three members, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, always existed. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. There was never a time when the Son did not exist. There was never a time when the Holy Spirit did not exist, nor was there ever a time when the Father, or to use gendered neutral terms, the Creator did not exist. But, 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 but don't we celebrate each December, the baby Jesus being born? Yeah, you're right, we do. But I want you to think of Jesus' birth as an outpouring of the Savior. Like we talked about on Pentecost being an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The Messiah, the Savior, Jesus, always existed. He just needed to become flesh and enter into a time reality in which we live to save all of creation. And he did so in a particular moment in time. Today, we're gonna to be talking a lot about our particular moments in time and how we inhabit a certain space and a certain social place and what this in indicates about our relationship to God. Now, I know this whole, there was never a time when the Messiah didn't exist and there was never a time when the Holy Spirit didn't exist. I know this is complicated, and we celebrate and worship one God who is yet three persons. I know we all just want to hear about how Jesus loves us, and always, yes, that's true, God loves you and is never done with you. But as an act of worship, as an act of reverence, of being created by the great creator, I want us to take some time today to think about the complexities of God being three in one. We heard today in Proverbs how God's wisdom was involved in the very act of creation. The book of Proverbs was compiled around the 4th century BCE, and so this personification of God's wisdom comes when the people of Israel were trying to figure out how their creation story, their creation story of God creating the world in seven days, matched with the creation story of their neighbors. Most of their neighbors had a female creating deity, and this female deity would usually give birth to the world or humanity as the people knew it. So in identifying God's wisdom as a she, the gendered language was an attempt to fit in with the time period. We, as 21st century Christians, read this and we go, wait a second, God's wisdom, isn't that the Holy Spirit? And we discover and read anew that, yeah, this is a little inkling, a little tiny picture of the Holy Spirit referenced in an Old Testament writing. 
So how do each of us understand God? Through who we are and through each of our unique situations in this particular time period and setting. You've heard me say before, I'm a suburban mom, I know. I need non-suburban moms to show me God. How do you see God? And all the other non-suburban moms need me to show me how I see God, to see this fuller picture of God because we are limited beings. So speaking of fuller pictures of God, we're gonna look at three different paintings today. The first one I want us to look at is a classic painting, infamous. It's by Andrei Rublev. It's in the 1400s and it can either be called the Trinity or the hospitality of Abram. If you remember, Abraham in Genesis 18 is visited by three angelic beings. So this is seen as an early reference to the Trinity. This depiction of Andrei Rublev's is classic. It's made its way into our Christian subconscious, just like the infamous Last Supper painting. So let's look at it. This painting is an icon. And while as Lutherans we don't necessarily do a lot of iconography, an icon is a visual representation meant to bring the viewer, that is you, closer to God. An icon is meant to invoke prayer and communication with God. In Rublev's painting, we have three identical figures all sitting around a table eating. It's the same figure, all three of them, from the rolls of chub on their necks to the two random curly strands hanging off the back of their hair. Each figure has two angelic wings. They wear different color robes, but all carry the same staff and all have a halo indicating the holiness that they have. As you look at this painting, which one of the three is the head? Which one's the CEO? None of them, right? You might think that the one in the middle is the one in charge, but the middle figure's gaze is off to the side. And the one off to the side is looking across the table at the third figure. The third figure's looking back to the middle figure. So we have the circular gaze and the circular view, emphasizing the importance of the other figures. And then the background of this painting continues this cyclical nature. The mountain is rising up and it's pointing towards the tree, which points towards the building, which brings your eye back to that figure in pink, taking you through the figure in pink's feet, which brings you right up again through the farthest right figure's feet, and you're in that circle and the gaze again and again and again. This is the Trinity. This is God as Trinity. None are dominant. Each is subordinate to the other. So that's one classic depiction of the Trinity, but back to our scriptures in Proverbs, the writer has confirmed that wisdom, who we understand to be the Holy Spirit, was part of the act of creation. This is a glimpse into the developing understanding of God as three in one. The one true God in this scripture Yahweh made everything, the scripture attests, and yet here is wisdom saying that she was there too, helping and rejoicing. For a fourth century BC mindset, this is revolutionary. There is one God, and yet in this one God, there is another entity that is part of the God creating. While it may not be fully fleshed out Trinitarian doctrine as you and I know it today, it's impressive. <laughs> Remember what Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 13, we see through a mirror dimly now, but soon we will see face to face. Our whole faith journey is seeing through a mirror dimly. We try to understand and we try to see more, but each time our God is so huge and infinite that we get little glimpses. And over time, over the millennia of humanity, we see more and more of God through our ancestors' work. We don't know everything about God, and that's okay. We've got God the creator having someone else present at creation, indicative that God is not alone. And I wanna repeat that. God is not alone. God has never been alone. God as three in one in the very Trinitarian concept is in relationship constantly. God is relational at God's very core. If God is constantly in relationship, how much more so ought we then to be in relationship? I wanna show you a second icon. And again, I'm gonna repeat myself. An icon is meant to invoke prayer, to bring the viewer back into a conversation with God. This one is a modern repainting of Rublev's Trinity. 
This one is by Kelly Latimer. He's an American artist working and living in St. Louis, does modern iconography. His piece is also called The Trinity, but notice how Latimer depicts the three-in-one relational nature of our God. His figures are definitely more feminine in form. We have different skin tones. Their faces are different from each other. Their hair is different. And yet notice, somewhere on each of these three figures is that same gray tunic or robe. The three members are holding hands with one another. Their angel wings are overlapping in this almost claustrophobic sense. There's an overwhelming depiction of unity repeated in the background with the curvy mountain and the tree and emphasizing the building, which, yes, again, is going to bring your eye back to the figure on the left and the feet. And the circle continues pointing around all in all. Now, I don't have any official training or understanding of visual art. My background is the written word, the art of sentences and stringing together phrases. But if I can appreciate the message behind these two paintings, I'm pretty confident you can too. Latimer's Trinity was created within this last decade, so that's why his depiction of God as three is more like our society. We see different types of people. He's an American artist, which affects his painting. Notice the different ethnicities present. For what it's worth, Latimer is also a pastor's kid, so I'm going to assume he grew up steeped in this Christian life and culture. And this is depicted in this very normal sense of three members of the Godhead sitting around a table. Given that this is Trinity Sunday, we need to have a third representation of the Trinity. And yes, I already said this, but we're going to have three different paintings. Here at Holy Love, one of our core values is to be faithfully curious. So we're practicing that today in this sermon by looking at these visual representations of God. This third and final Trinity depiction is by Father B. Giuliani. Father Giuliani was a Catholic priest. He died just last year in 2021. Father Giuliani worked out of Connecticut, and he was one of the chaplains at Ground Zero in New York City. He was a trained painter way back in his youth before he entered the ministry, and he didn't pick up the paintbrush again until about the 1990s when he was commissioned to do so by the Catholic Church. This painting is called Crow Trinity. The Crow people are a Native American tribe whose ancestral lands originally were in Ohio, but throughout the Western expansion of the United States, they were driven further and further west, settling for a time in Wyoming, Montana, South Dakota. There's now one Crow reservation just south of Billings in Montana. So in Father Giuliani's depiction of the Trinity, he has done so in several different Native American cultures, including the Lakota and the Comanche. I picked the Crow Trinity painting today for our study. But I really encourage you to do a little Google search on Father Giuliani's other Trinity icons. So this icon I picked because it emphasizes, again, that circular imagery I've been harping. The entire painting is framed within a circle. The circle itself is squared within three colors of black, red, and yellow, colors sacred to the Crow people. Yellow indicative of the sun or the east, red indicative of the setting sun, black indicative of death. God, the three-in-one, is present as both the warrior, the elder, and the eagle, the sacred animal of the Crow folks. And the eagle's wings are circular and tipping down in a protective, hovering way. Remember how Jesus says as he looks over Jerusalem, how I long to be like a mother hen and gather you under my wings. We get this sense of that. Father Giuliani has used elements of crow culture to depict the Trinity. As I've mentioned before at the beginning, and I've been trying to emphasize how the Trinity has always existed. And these three members have always been in one union together. There was never a time that God was not. Father Giuliani sh sought to show in his work that the Christian God was present in the Americas long before the Europeans settled the area and brought about their missions. And I know that's probably complicated and complex to understand, but I want to share a true story with you. I went to a conservative Bible church back when I was in the Chicago area and in high school. And one of the youth group leaders, her name was Mama Jane. Mama Jane was the best. <laughs> She had served as a missionary in Central America for decades, and she had three kids. Her last kid was an oops baby and was about my age. 
and they only left Central America because he had some health problems that needed more help than Central America could offer. On one of our mission trips with Mama Jane, we were cleaning up after Hurricane Katrina, and she shared about her times in these remote villages in Central America. She said for a couple of years, her and her family, her two older sons and her husband, lived amongst a people who were considered unreached by modern civilization. And yet, as they got to know them, this unreached people tribe had a Trinitarian understanding of God. God as creator, redeemer, and sustainer of all life. She said there was very little theological mission work that she did in her time with this group. God is at work and reveals God's self. <laughs> Even if you go back and read some of Plato's works, you can see a triad understanding of God. Triad is in Trinity, and Plato wrote around the 5th century BC, over 600 years before Christ shows up. So what I'm trying to say, and what I'm hoping that you understand from this message today and our time looking at these paintings is that God has always existed, will always exist, and is currently existing in our present cultures. God is in our world and throughout all of history. God is relational within the very nature of the Trinity. God is relational also with creation, including you and me. We, as part of God's creation, get to be in this giant relationship with the Trinity and get to constantly be loved and adored by God. What a privilege indeed. Come join the dance of Trinity before all worlds begun. The interweaving of the three, the Father, Spirit, Son. The universe of space and time did not arise by chance, but as the Let us profess the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Joining with the saints around the world, let us pray to our triune God. Good, gracious, and holy Lord, we give you thanks for this time together. Thank you for the opportunity to think about you, to think about your relationship with yourself and how you, out of the abundance of your love, have created the world. Continue to guide us into deeper faith and deeper understanding. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we give you thanks for all our students and staff through our preschool and kindergarten. We pray that those who come to summer school may be refreshed. We pray that those who are on break might be safe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we pray for humbleness of hearts, for wisdom and for guidance of our leaders. We ask that you would give an appreciation for all people. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. God, our great healer, we pray for all who have need in mind, in body, or in spirit. Surround them with your love, guide them with your presence, and comfort them with your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we pray for all as the summer continues, that you would keep us safe and keep us enjoying the creation that you have so abundantly made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Trusting that you hear us and knowing that you care, we lay our prayers before your throne of grace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all and also with you. Please share a sign of peace amongst one another. Thank you for being part of Holy Love's worshiping community. I ask that in this time, we respond to God with a thankful heart. As you give, we are able to continue our ministries, including this recorded service. You can give online via our PayPal link on our website. You can give via the QR code seen on the screen, or you can send a check into the church. However you choose to financially give, we really appreciate it. It helps us continue spreading the mission and gospel of Christ. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our, your, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You reveal your glory as the glory of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, equal in majesty, undivided in splendor, one Lord, one God, ever to be adored in your eternal glory. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power, which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, all of you. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
Again, after supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Beloved of God, for as often as we eat of this bread and we drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he returns. Joining with others in Christ, let us pray as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please come to the table. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. All are welcome. This is the body and blood of Christ, given and shed for you. Let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please receive the benediction. May our almighty and everlasting God God, our creator, God, our redeemer, and God, our sustainer, bless you now and forever. Amen. God loved the world so that he gave his only son for lost to save that all Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Tell what God has done. Thanks be to God. <laughs>